The truth is that sometimes social media marketing can seem quite overwhelming. It changes quickly, there's so much going on and you're always wondering if you're doing the right thing and most of the time you feel like you're missing out on something. So here are my five tips on how to make social media marketing management less of a massive headache. Hi, I'm Maria Hammett and this is Happy Marketing Club and these are my five tips for making social media marketing just less, way less overwhelming. Number one is an editorial schedule. Sometimes it's called an editorial calendar and basically it literally shows you per week, um, per month, what you're going to be posting wherever. So if you're on Facebook and Twitter and have a blog, then those three assets you need to figure out which content you'll be posting and how you're going to share it. That means deciding per social network how often you're going to be posting and what content you're going to be posting and also who is going to be posting it. It's really important to have a decent schedule that everyone who is involved in social media marketing or producing that content can be aware of. Even if you're a team of one, it's really important to st sit down. I recommend that you have at least a per month schedule of what's going out where and how you're going to be sharing that. Tip number two is to simplify. If you're overwhelmed, that is a huge sign that there's just too much going on. It isn't about not knowing enough or feeling like, you know, you definitely are missing out on information, therefore you can't move forward. It's important to simplify. So if those blog posts are becoming a massive headache, then maybe you're putting them out too often or writing way too much. This is a common error I see. People write way too much in a blog post. It could easily be reduced down or divided into several blog posts. Huge, huge error because so much effort goes into putting out great content that if that's overwhelming you, you need to simplify. The messaging needs to be simpler, less writing, and less frequency perhaps. Perhaps you're just trying to put out too much. When you look at Twitter, if you, we can get a lot of points across in 140 characters. You don't need to have so much stuff, so much content. You can really repurpose and reuse what you have if you sit down to have a look at it and really be honest with yourself with how can this content be simplified. It's a fantastic suggestion to ask another coworker to review something that you're really frustrated with and to help you simplify. So simplifying can mean reducing your messaging, the length of your messaging, the, how much content is in a given message. So again, the blog post versus a Facebook post, it doesn't need to be, you know, 500 characters. It really should be super short and to the point. And it could also mean reducing the frequency that your messaging goes out. So if you're trying to desperately put out, say, seven Facebook posts a week, you want to hit every single day, well, let's bring that down to five. Five is more than enough and will help you simplify. Tip number three is stats. You really need to know the stats, the insights within Facebook, your stats for your website, your blog, etc. And the most important factors to know are what is actually being engaged with. So which of your blog posts get comments? Which of your blog posts actually get shared, get picked up? Which of your videos get watched the most? Which of your Facebook posts are people actually interacting with? They're putting out comments, they're sharing, they're liking. It's important to know what content is working so that in order to simplify, you can put out more of what is working and less of what isn't. It's totally cool to test new content just to see, you know, obviously, is it going to be picked up? How is it going to work? But you don't need to be overwhelmed with always creating something different and new in, the, in a content sense. Stick with what works. That also, again, helps you simplify and your stats will tell you the truth about what is working. One of the most important stats that I tell people to really keep an eye on, whether you use Google Analytics or any other analytics tool for your website, or if your blog is your main uh, source, is check out the traffic sources. You should know where people are coming from. So. For me, I get a lot of people from YouTube and Pinterest. It usually does way better than Facebook for me. Not the case at all for other clients that I have. You have to first put out the content for a few months in order to have stats to work with. 
However, many people that I work with have been on Facebook for a few years or have had a blog for a few years and they're working their butts off but they have no clue, no clue whatsoever where traffic is actually coming from. I know that Google Analytics itself can be very overwhelming, but if you go into those traffic sources, you should know over the last month, especially looking at the last 30 days, where is traffic coming from to my website? What is actually working? So if Pinterest and YouTube work for me, then guess which social networks I'm going to be nurturing? You got it. That's right, very simple, right? Pinterest and YouTube. I still use Facebook, but I know that as far as my effort is concerned and the ROI, the return on investment on my effort, these are the best marketing tools for me right now, given what, given the content that I have to work with and the way I put it out. Number four is advocates. Look for advocates within your organization. This works even if you have one employee and that would be you. So let's talk about a small business. If you have several people on your team and they don't have to be in marketing, they don't have to be in PR, they don't have to be in sales, but anyone within your organization that actually is addicted or loves Facebook or loves Pinterest or loves Twitter, loves blogging, loves editing images, make sure, this is a huge time saver to it, it's just efficiency. Get these people involved in helping. Get these people involved in nurturing the social media marketing presence of your business. So you still have the person in marketing who's managing and overseeing these or in PR, but you're utilizing these other individuals within the company who are already, you know, they work for you, they know what your brand's about, but they love these social media tools. They're going to have input for you. They could either be involved in managing these particular assets a certain amount of time during the week, or just providing input. If they love using Pinterest, if you have someone on your staff who loves using Pinterest, they're going to have so many suggestions for how you can improve your presence. The type of content that they think your business should be putting out because they use, live and breathe the tool they understand. They are on the other side of that fence, right? As an observer, as an interactor as well. So these are people that you need to include at some point in your strategy, whether it's throughout the week, they help manage accounts, or it's quarterly when you're looking for input for planning for the next few months, especially putting that editorial calendar together. These advocates are invaluable for improving your social media presence and making it just less stressful and overwhelming to manage overall. So if you're a business owner of one, you might be thinking, well, where are my advocates? It's just me. Ask your friends. You're going to have friends who love Pinterest, who love YouTube, Twitter, etc., 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 or on YouTube all the time. They will have insight for you. Just ask anyone who frequently goes on YouTube what makes a great YouTube video. They'll tell you. It's you don't have to. You probably don't have to dig very deep for that information at all. And this will help you refine what you're putting out. So look for those advocates, whether with it, whether within your organization or friends if you're a super small business owner. And number five is focus. This is a tip I give to businesses who really just feel like they're all over the place with their social media. I tell them to refine their focus for one month at a time. That means keep your social media presence going but pick one social network and focus on that. That is the heart of your focus for that month. So for example, you could pick Facebook. For the next 30 days or for the next month, starting off on the first, we're going to focus on Facebook, improving our Facebook presence. And before you do that, you're going to sit down and figure out the editorial schedule, what you've got to work with, how you're going to schedule things and when, who's going to be doing it, and then get that done. Really kill it on Facebook for a whole month. So you're still nurturing your other networks, but your main focus is Facebook. Month two, you're going to switch that focus. You're going to focus on Pinterest, if that is a social network that you are utilizing for your business. And for that month, again, before you start off, you strategize, have that roadmap, and get going. For that second month, you're only focusing, your main focus, rather, is that Pinterest presence. This really allows employees, anyone who's on staff, to nurture those social networks to really focus on just that social network, figure out what's working and what isn't. When you put a whole heart effort on one social network, you can really look at those stats and see, 
what is working and what isn't. If you're diluting your effort all over the place because you never took time to really plan and execute an excellent strategy on a given social network, if you just keep adding more responsibility on top of that, more social networks, more messaging, it's just going to all get diluted, lost, and it's going to be a huge mess. So my last tip, number five, the focus. It's really important to take a 30-day period, a one-month period, and focus on really executing an excellent social media strategy on just one note social network. So if you're on Twitter, I'm not saying dump it. Just keep it going loosely, but really focus on that one. Take time to plan for that one. Next month, it's social network number two that becomes the main focus, and we've taken time to plan as to what we're going to do. Sometimes clients do this for four or six months until they've really tapped into everything. So a blog included, you'd have that one month to focus on a blog. And guess what happens after that six month? People are much happier. The social networks have so much more life. Everything just seems to make a lot more sense and it becomes much easier than after that six month period to create a plan, a social media marketing plan for the next six months and include all of the social networks. And you get a better sense, again, when you're comparing stats of six months back of where traffic's coming from, you can tell so much better when you've spent a month on Facebook, a month on Twitter, a month on Pinterest, a month on your blog. Where is our traffic really coming from? Where do we get the most people coming from to our website when we give it all that we've got? So to recap, number one, editorial schedule. It's so important to know what you've got to work with, plan it out, when it's going to go out, how often, who's going to do it. Number two is simplify. Simplifying your messaging and often even simplifying the frequency that your messaging goes out. Number three are stats. You need to know your stats. What types of content are actually resonating with your audience and where are the traffic sources? Where are people actually coming from? You might spend a ton of time on Facebook, but if they're coming in from Pinterest, then you should be considering about shifting your time. Advocates. Look for those advocates internally within your organization who already are in love with the given social networks that you are trying to nurture for your business. Number five is focus. Pick a 30-day period to really focus on a given social network and you will see massive results. I hope these five tips help to make social media marketing much more manageable for you and your business. And I hope that you share this video with another small business owner or friend. I would really appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Maria Hammond and happy marketing. But we didn't. So it needed to, yeah, right, good, cool.